Hello everyone, this is Gwydion, and today I want to walk through and show you a program called Questbound. So I found Questbound uh, several weeks ago, and I signed up for early access. And what Questbound is, is it's a very inter interactive way to create character sheets. So for me, and it's not just that, I'll explain more, but that's what I'm principally using it for. But for me, I've been doing a lot more solo gaming. My schedule is just such that it's really hard to get people and to, to do a consistent role-playing campaign, say on Fantasy Grounds, which is where I usually am, or Alchemy, which I'm starting to use. So I find myself starting to dive in a little more to solo role-play. And so I was trying to find something that might be a little bit easier and more interactive for creating character sheets. And I found Questbound. And right now you can sign up for early access. It's a one-time fee of $50. And again, I would stress one-time fee. So I will go through briefly, I'll show you the, the pricing structure. But again, you can sign up for early access and I'll scroll down just a bit. But in addition to allowing you the ability to customize character sheet, sheets, you can also make your own rule sets. So I think for folks on some of the channels that I hang out on, like Mr. Mean and others, there's a lot of independent developers, I feel like, of, or creators creating their own rule sets. And I think this might be a game changer on how they show, create them, display them. So I'm gonna scroll down a bit and you can see a little bit. I'll just I'll just click play for a minute just to show you a little bit of the, the power of this rule set creation tool that's embedded within Questbound. The so really easy drag and drop, but very powerful. And then what I'm gonna show you today is I'm gonna show you how I created, or not how I created, but the output of what I put together for a solo role-playing game called Carnifalis using the interactive character sheet functionality of Questbound. And one, one thing I think is really cool is that all of this is done through what Kurt, the creator of Questbound, terms uh, visual programming. I'm not saying that's his term. I'm sure a lot of people use that term, but my point is it's not coding. Like I don't, I don't know coding. I dabble in a lot of of creation things like within Fantasy Grounds and other places. So I'm pretty familiar with just getting into things and figuring them out. But everything I've done that I'm about to show you on the character sheet is all done through like drag and drop and visual programming, which is really cool. So let me briefly go into the pricing and I'll put a link to Questbound. I would really encourage you to sign up to help support Kurt. But right now what he's offering is this middle section or column, which is the creator. So one time fee of $50. Right now, it's all done through an online app. But you can see once this is official and comes out of early access, it's going to be a desktop and self-hosted uh, version if you, if you stay with that $50 one-time fee. There will be a, a paid version that's, a, sorry, that's a monthly fee. And the best I can tell looking at this, I haven't talked to Kurt a ton about this piece, but it mainly looks like it would allow for easier sharing and adding players to your rule sets and not having you uh, have to host that yourself. So if you're okay with hosting things yourself and you wanna share out, but you, you can do the hosting on your own, I don't think you're gonna need the, the pro feature, which has that monthly fee. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but I'm just saying, I think there's options. So that's that. Uh, he does have a great video. It's about an hour and a half, but very well bookmarked, timestamped. So if you do get Questbound and you want to kind of understand and look at how to build the sheets yourselves, you can go to that video on YouTube and I'll, I'll link that in the video that, uh, that I'm putting out here as well so that you can see that. But I would encourage you also, he's got a very active Discord or pretty active, I think. I'm on it a lot and he's very responsive. All right. So what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you is the character I created for a solo RPG called Karenathalos. What I'm showing you right now is the drive through RPG page for the creator of Kernathalus, which is Black Oath Entertainment. And the individual is Alex T. He's awesome. I've actually done a fair bit with Under Ashen Skies. I put a video out on that as well using a different tool, a different soul play, uh, solo role playing uh, BTT that I found that I thought worked really well for Under Ashen Skies. That's a really cool like survival horror type. Kernathalus, which I'm about to show you, it's more of like a grim, dark, I would say it's in the vein of not, I wouldn't say like 
exactly similar in any means from mechanics or anything, but along the lines of like D100 Dungeon or 2D6 Dungeon, but I find it in my mind a little more gritty or like customizable without quite as much tracking as D100. They're still tracking that you have to do, but I feel like it's more along the line of 2D6 Dungeon, like you can create the dungeon as you go. Sorry. You can do that in D100 as well, but I just, I find the mechanics pretty engaging on Kyrnathalus and can't wait to do a playthrough. All right, so please support Black Oath as well. You can buy the PDF for Kyrnathalus for $15. And you can also, I think, buy the Softbound book on uh, Amazon. So, all right, let's get into the character sheet for Kyrnathalus. So I'm gonna focus more on just the output of the character sheet and I'm going to show you Give me one second, pop this over. So let's start by showing you the PDF character sheet that comes when you buy the PDF for the actual game. You'll see this, uh, this is one of the downloads. So health, toughness, aether, and sanity are kind of the core items. And I'll go through that maybe when I do a character creation video. In this one, I'm just gonna more touch on the components. So you've got your basic items here, you've got your XP name level. You'll have some personal goals that are optional, but Seems like that's something you probably want to do. It gives you, I think once you get through those goals, gives you some benefits. There's a skill mechanics, a, a bunch of skills. It's a roll under mechanic. So you're gonna be rolling a D100 and trying to get under your skill level. Exhaustion comes into play and, and I'll describe that a bit when we go to the interactive character sheet I built. Light source, lighting is important. Here's your weapon section. Masteries, if you play most role-playing games, it's it's akin to like the class system in 5e or maybe uh, the path system in Shadow of the Demon Lord, but it's a way to customize your character. You'll start with two masteries, but it's it allows you to, to really pick the paths and the, the direction you want to go with your character. Madness, so if you lose too much sanity, you'll have to roll in the madness table and you can track the outcomes here, notes, damage, vulnerabilities, and resistances. So quite a few damage types. So this will allow you to track if you have immunity, vulnerability, resistance, or restoring is more like, are you healed by that damage type? So think about, I guess, in this situation, maybe maybe holy or not, maybe holy damages undead, something like that. I'm not sure if that's the case, but that idea. Gear, so you have a lot of, of ability to track gear and armor is important and the location of the armor is important. Pouches, again, all related to um, the tracking equipment. Tension dice, so that's, that's a mechanic that you'll be rolling on dice as you go from room to room to determine if some event happens. So you'll start at a D8 and you'll roll, when you go into a room, you roll a D8. If you get a one or a two, then you go down one die to, a, to the, the, the lower, uh, the smaller dice. And ultimately, once you get to a D4 by rolling enough ones or twos, if you roll one or two once you're down to a D4, that'll trigger a growing darkness event. And then layer domain, basically you're gonna be rolling to determine if you've found the layer as you're going through this dungeon. Overseer is the is the basically the entity that oversees the domain or the section of the dungeon you're in. And that's it. So now let's get into the sheet that I've used are created based on the quest bound functionality. So as you look at this, again, you can tell I can, I brought in the graphics. So I put together a background, this like parchment ish background just to make it pop. But I, I put some of the, the images from the PDF into GIMP. And then I created a transparent level la layer, excuse me, and then uploaded th those images as PNGs. So they were transparent. So I could put them on this background. And then I created all, everything you see here. And there's several tabs that I'll go through. And I, I changed a little bit of the layout based on how I wanted to see this. So let's start with the core attributes. So if you hover over these, there's a pop-up. And this is really easy. I created an attribute, created a description. And now when I hover over, it'll tell you health is a measure of how much damage your body can take before dying. So I'll go through this in character creation. But to show you quickly, let's just say I have five health. Takes just a second. And I think that's because, you know, we're still in early access. So it's not like it takes just a second to, to update. And then if I click on this, I can also just type in a five. 
or whatever the number is. Yeah, do that. Let me try that again. If I type in a five, give it a second. I don't know why that's not. I know it works. Huh. Wonder if that's something on my keyboard. No, I've done this before. All right, some reason that's probably something on my end, but you can certainly increase it here, but I'm confident you can also type it in. I've done that many times before. So, all right, so that's, so now you have like your current, your max health. I also have a temp health. So if you need to track that, you can track that here and name level. I did build in some automation. I'm gonna scroll left using my arrow keys or to the right. And every time you level up to 1,000 XP, you can then level up. And I've created some sections. These are all just like, again, drag and drop shapes. I've created these buttons. And I've also created these notes so that I know when do I get XP. So I can click on these. So once I open a locked door container, then I can click on this. And you'll see this over here, update. And each time you enter a new domain, I click on that. So if that happens, it updates. And I'm at 60. Each time you defeat an overseer is 200. So I'm gonna show you every time you get to a thousand, then you have the ability to level up. So I'm gonna click on this until I get to a thousand and then keep an eye on this little level up text. So once it gets above a thousand, again, really simple logic I created. When I created a background image, that'll pop this little green highlight that's kind of like, hey, level up. And once I do that and I add the things I need to, then I can click this click to reset XP after level up button. And then everything will go back to zero. That highlight's gone. So I know I'm back to the, uh, the start of a new level. And then obviously I could click this up and show it as level two. Skills. The mechanic is in Kernathalus is if you roll doubles, then once you get to a point where you're, you camp, you can try to roll to improve that skill. So in this case, like if it's athletics, I can tick and say, oh, I rolled a double. I don't want to forget to be able to roll that and, and roll that check when I camp. So you can check these to designate that you'll have the ability to try to level up. Exhaustion was kind of a fun one because there are different exhaustion levels and I'll hover over this effect. And it depends on the uh, what number I forget the I think it starts at 10. You get to exhaustion level one. You start at zero. But I. I put in the effects in the description so that if I hover over that, I can see, all right, if I do get to a one, I heal half the amount of toughness from all sources. So if I'm supposed to heal four, I'll only hear to heal two, but this will remind me if this gets to one, then I know what impact it'll have on me. So, but the cool thing is the way that you, you look at exhaustion is it's the net of your current exhaustion, less your resistance. And I do have hover overs here, pop-ups. So if I move this to like, say, a 20, see if that'll let me get to a 20. Jeez, sometimes I struggle with doing this. So give me a second. I'm going to put that back, and then let's try this again. Look at that backspace, and then let's try 20. You can see that popped already, but let's, man, I'm having the worst time. I know this is me, not the program. Okay. So this popped to a level effect level two because I have a 20, but then let's make this say an 11. I don't know if that'll go back to um, a one or it might go back to zero. Okay, so how about a nine? Bear with me, make this a nine. And then once I make that a nine, then it goes to level one. So just again, a little cool way to, to track it and it's doing the math. I created that functionality, which maybe I'll show in another video, but pretty easy to do. These are just toggles for your light source, which is important. And let me go over to active conditions. So for these, I wanted a way to visually represent if I did have a condition. So if I click on that text box, I have a conditional rendering for these conditions. So if I do tick this checkbox, then I've got all of these images that'll pop behind it to just highlight for me, hey, you're blinded. Then I can hover over here and it will tell me, and I, and I truncated the text to make it short, but a blinded character has minus 40 at all checks. I haven't automated that yet, maybe I will, but for now it just, I, I can, in my mind, I can tick on these 
and it's easy to see them. And a few of them have uh, degrees, like they have different levels. So I can put like poison two and track it that way. So these are just text inputs for my perks and my madness. So that's it for that tab. Let's go into combat. Combat, you get your weapons, skills, notes. And again, I can type in longsword, whatever. I might change the colors of these to make them pop a little bit more. Because I noticed when I was doing this the other day, it's a little hard for me to read. So maybe I'll make like immunity, green, vulnerable, red, resistant, I don't know, blue. I'll, maybe I'll come up with a color scheme, but that way when they're checked, it pops better. Okay. Armor and quick slots. This one was fun. This is the mastery. So I wanted to have all the mastery links here so that if I was creating a character, I could look at these to remind myself what they are. So I've created out of the rule book in the PDF, I have created the rule book pages within Questbound. So let's just say I want to look at what is a brawler. So I click on brawler. That's a hyperlink that I set up. And now when it renders, renders a really nice clean version of the page. So I see like a brawler tells you a little bit about what brawler is. It tells you your passive benefit, which is in this call out box. And then you automatically get the tier one, um, uh, I guess, benefit of brawler. So now if I go back to my sheet and I can click on the combat again to go back to that tab. So now I created this. This took a little bit of time, but it was really fun and pretty simple, but I have logic that says if either any three, either of these, sorry, any one of these three masteries equals the, these names, it'll highlight that mastery. So I know I have it. So let's just say I want Umbra Phantom. So I click the drop down on that. You can see it populates, hey, I have dark sight, but it also highlights over here. And it just reminds me that, okay, yeah, I can click on that link. And if I do this one, Dusk Blade, same thing. It's going to highlight. And again, that's clickable. And then I'll have to, as I level up, I can just type these in. But I thought that was a nice way when you're creating your character sheet to put that together. Inventory, pretty straightforward. I didn't do a lot with this. These are all form fillables. So you can uh, track crafting supplies, cooking, rations, all your pouch items. And then game events other. This, uh, I just did a few things here. One, I wanted to be able to track my tension die. And you start at eight. There must be a mechanic, which is why this is in parentheses, as to maybe you can get to 10. But I can click on these and say, OK, I'm going to start at eight. And it'll highlight where I'm at. So if I roll and all of a sudden I roll a one or two, now I'm down to a six. I can say, OK, let's uncheck that and let's go back to six. So it'll visually, and then once I get to four, it's like, it's red. It's getting tense. Things are getting serious here. And the same thing with the layer. So I could start out on a 12 and track these visually as I um, go down in the, in the color scheme. And I do have notes here, tension die check triggers. I probably need to space these out a little bit more. The nice thing is if you see the pencil up here, even though I'm not in the um, template, I'm, I'm now in an actual character sheet, I can click on that pencil and now these are editable. So if I didn't like the spacing there, I can move it. Then I can go back to my character sheet and it's done. So I know that I need to check on the tension die, I, I need to run a check. If I'm moving from, from one room to another, I can already see I had a typo there. If I make noise or specific circumstances triggered by events or creatures. So I can put the overseer in here. If I really wanted to, I can make that a drop down. I'm in notes. And that's it. I mean, this this took a while, but it was it was super fun, really engaging. I, I think I did enough automation for me at least that I didn't go overkill. I'm not trying to like automate everything but I think it's gonna make it easy to run. So I'm gonna do a video next on creating a character to show you the character creation, show you a bit about Karen Nathalis. And then after that, I, I also settle up a lot of this so I could run combat and fantasy grounds. So I, I put in all of the opponent, the monsters, the opponents, the overseers. So I'm gonna to try to use the character sheet from Questbound and the rolling and functionality of combat and fantasy grounds and, and run a session hopefully this weekend. So thanks for watching. And if you uh, have more questions, find me on my discord uh, is a great place or join the Questbound forum and, and pop in there. Till next time, uh, drop a like in this video if, if you like this and it's something you're interested in more content on. Thanks everyone.